This video is going to be on lymphocytosis, which is an increased concentration of lymphocytes in blood. There are five causes of lymphocytosis, and I'll go through each one of those. The first cause is pseudolymphocytosis, which isn't a true lymphocytosis. It's when you use an adult reference interval for an animal that's less than a year of age. So young animals normally have higher lymphocyte concentrations than adults, and they have some other hematologic differences as well. They often have lower red cell masses, so they'll have lower PCVs, hematocrit, red cell counts, and hemoglobin concentration. And they have smaller red cells too, so the MCVs might be lower. The second cause of lymphocytosis is excitement or physiologic lymphocytosis. And this is due to an epinephrine release in response to a flight or fight response. So to explain this lymphocytosis, I'm going to draw a heart and a blood vessel and the spleen. And within the blood vessel, I'm going to draw a marginal pool of neutrophils and lymphocytes and a circulating pool of neutrophils and lymphocytes. And remember, the circulating pool, the ones that are not adherent to the endothelium, that's the pool that's sampled during a blood draw. So with an epinephrine release, there's an increased cardiac output due to increased heart rate and increased stroke volume, and this results in an increased blood flow through the capillaries and blood vessels. And this force washes the marginal neutrophils and lymphocytes into the circulating pool. So there's a redistribution of neutrophils and lymphocytes into the circulating pool. But that epinephrine release also causes contraction of the smooth muscle within the spleen, and this contraction releases red cells and platelets that are normally stored in the spleen. So oftentimes you'll see an erythrocytosis, which is an increased number of red cells, and a thrombocytosis, which is an increased number of platelets. So now onto the third cause of lymphocytosis, which is chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation results from chronic antigenic stimulation. So there's all of these antigens, foreign antigens or self antigens, and this results in hyperplasia of lymphocytes within lymphoid tissue. But these lymphocytes don't stay within the lymphoid tissue. They still undergo recirculation between the blood and the tissues, and the lymph node, and the lymphatics, and they do this recirculation. So there's really lymphocytes distributed throughout the body. It's just that we're seeing them more in the blood because that's what we're sampling. So chronic inflammation is due to lymphoid hyperplasia from chronic antigenic stimulation. The fourth cause of lymphocytosis is lymphoid neoplasia, and this is going to be its own video, so stay tuned for that. And the last cause of lymphocytosis is hypoadrenocorticism, also known as Addison's disease. This is a deficiency of cortisol and aldosterone that's normally produced by the adrenal cortex. And there's several different causes of hypoadrenocorticism, which I won't focus on now. But for now, the low cortisol causes the lymphocytosis because cortisol normally sequesters lymphocytes within the lymph node, and it does cause lymphocyte cell death or lympholysis. So a deficiency of cortisol leads to less sequestration in the lymph node, and it leads to less lymphocyte cell death or lympholysis. Now, hypoadrenocorticism can also cause lots of other ClinPath changes, on the CBC, it can cause an eosinophilia or an increased number of eosinophils, and there's lots of other chemistry and UA abnormalities you may see as well. So that's it. The five causes of lymphocytosis are pseudolymphocytosis, excitement or physiologic lymphocytosis, chronic antigenic uh, stimulation, lymphoid neoplasia, and hypoadrenocorticism.